Lieutenant Colonel H. James Green is this year's Veterans Day speaker. Lieutenant Colonel Green graduated from Yale in 1955, where he received his bachelor's in international relations. He was a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force. His assignments include 3rd Bomb Wing, Japan, and certified pilot in nuclear weapons delivery targets in North Korea, China, and the Soviet Union. In the US, he was assigned to research and development command in the 1950s. During the early phase of the Vietnam War, he flew over 100 combat missions in B-57 bombers. His last assignment in his Air Force career was flying C-5 transports in worldwide operations as a commander. He was raised in Springfield, Massachusetts, but currently lives in Watertown, Connecticut. Please join me in warmly welcoming Lieutenant Colonel James Green. Good morning. Good morning. We're here today in recognition of those that have served in the armed forces of the United States. And we call it, well now we, we used to call it Armistice Day. It originated at the end of World War I. And it was designated on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour that they ceased firing in World War I. And that's, we're at the 12th of November now, but we adjusted it a little bit just for the convenience. But yesterday was actually the official day. And it's a, an awkward sort of holiday because War is a tragic event in just about all cases. And we recognize the people that fought in these wars. And we need to understand how this happens and what we need to do from here on out. I mean, is war inevitable? And I was invited here today to talk specifically about, not necessarily just my career, but about the Vietnam War. That was a very painful experience for this country and for a lot of other countries, including Vietnam. So what we need to do is look at the reasons we get involved in wars and if there's anything we can do to change that situation. Wars have always been with us. And hopefully, we can find a way to avoid having more veterans. Because without wars, you have no veterans. And I think this is a, something we should work towards. So specifically, since my war was the Vietnamese War, we need to talk a little bit about how did we get involved in the Vietnam War. Now, many of you have different ideas probably about how we got involved, why we got involved. But I specifically would like to address the notion of why specifically did the United States choose to go into Vietnam? We're thousands of miles away from Vietnam. Now, why were we in Vietnam? And it's interesting because Vietnam was part of the French Empire. They weren't an independent country. They were part of the, the French establishment. And so this was the case, but why did the United States have to get involved in this? Well, specifically because at the same time there was a Cold War going on, the United States was opposed to, to what the Soviet Union was doing. And the, and the French were our allies, and they were part of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, 
And even though we're talking about half a globe away, we still decided we would stand with the French to protect their possession, which was Vietnam. Now that was a strange situation because the people in Vietnam were not all that happy with the French because the French decided to impose their laws on the people in, in Vietnam. And their laws were not compatible with their, their culture or anything like it. And the French were not particularly a welcome group of folks. They treated the Vietnamese population like they had no laws to protect their working habits. There were no labor unions, of course. They worked. The population of Vietnam would work 12 hours a day with, with no break, seven days a week in the mines. And it was not only the French, but the Japanese had troops in Vietnam because they were looking for rice in the Delta. And of course, the French were, were primarily interested in the mines that were active at the time. And they weren't there necessarily to improve the lives of the Vietnamese people. They were there to protect their financial interests, to protect the mines. So what would happen is the United States would look at this and say, well, we're allied with the French in NATO, in Europe, then we should support them in their efforts in Vietnam because we are anti-communist. And the Vietnamese were under the heel of the French and we were there to protect our interests because we were allied with the French. So this is how the United States got involved in Vietnam. We decided to support the French. We didn't bring our troops in there. We gave them equipment. We supplied airplanes. And in fact, we had US military people change clothes and they were U.S. civilians, and they were flying with the Vietnamese, South Vietnamese Air Force. And at some point, things started going badly, and the French were making one last stand at Dien Bien Phu, and they lost. At that point, Vietnam was divided north and south, the Geneva Convention decided that they would meet and decide how to settle this whole event. And the United States kind of stepped back a little bit because they had lost. The French decided they were, they're going to pull out. They're not going to stay there, which, which they did. So the Geneva Accords decided to negotiate how they would divide the country, north and south. And they laid down some pretty strict rules about how they would handle this. They said, first, they said, well, we're going to freeze all military activity the way it is. And the competing forces had to maintain their current inventory of weaponry. In other words, you could have propeller driven airplanes but you couldn't introduce any kind of jet aircraft. This was mandated by the Geneva Accords. So when the United States got involved, and that's when I got involved, we moved into Vietnam. We started operating in Vietnam, but we had jets. So we could bring those airplanes into Vietnam, but we couldn't deliver any kind of weaponry. We could fly around and we could take pictures and 
that's, that's what we did. And we could deliver packages. So that's what we did. We, we flew around Vietnam and we, we uh, sent back pictures, but we couldn't introduce any, any new weaponry. In the meantime, we had American pilots flying with Vietnamese pilots because the American pilots could not be in command of any uh, airplanes. So they were as civilians. So they would fly World War II style aircraft and their co-pilot would be a Vietnamese pilot. So this is how they managed to negotiate the problems with, uh, with the Geneva Accords. So that, at that point is when I got involved and then suddenly our squadron was sent to Vietnam and the, the US and her allies decided we can't, we can't live with this restriction. We're gonna have to use our modern airplanes so we can protect our interests in Vietnam. So at that point, we were allowed to fly airplanes and drop weapons that were jets. And this changed the character of the war. So then, once we made that commitment, then it necessitated the United States bringing out the draft, drafting American troops, and sending them into Vietnam, because now we've expanded this war. So that is essentially how the United States got deeply involved, supposedly for protecting the interests of the French. But the French had been defeated at that point, and we were there alone with our, our allies trying to dominate this nation, which was divided to north and south by the Geneva Accords. And the folks in the north, the communists, Ho Chi Minh and, and, and company, they were not going to be satisfied with just controlling half of Vietnam. They were going to have all of it. So then the, the situation arose, well, how can we, how can we do that? We're still fighting from the north, we have to move south and, and control the whole country. And we've got the United States standing in our way. So that's primarily what uh, my organization did. We were there to stop the incursion from the north going south. And we called it the Ho Chi Minh Trail because the Ho Chi Minh Trail would start off and they'd bring supplies, weapons, and troops down at night normally, and they'd go through Laos and part of uh, uh, Western Vietnam. And our, my job specifically in my organization, we were positioned to stop the traffic, to cut down the, the import of arms and troops into the south from the north, which meant we'd fly at night because they were, didn't want to be seen and it was invisible. So at night we would fly up along the trail and we would see the lights of the trucks. But as soon as they heard the airplanes, of course they turned the lights off and we would do our best to stop this truck traffic. So that was primarily what, what we did. And we weren't very successful at it because they continued to expand their operations in the south, and eventually they, they gained more and more control over the entire country. And they were very, very clever about it because commanding the, the troops in the north was General Jop, who was probably one of the most, uh, I want to say the most, well, the most skillful general in the whole theater. Jop was a little guy. I think he stood about five feet tall, but he was probably the, the most effective general in the whole country. And his clever 
tactic against the guerrillas in, uh, in the South was very skillful. He knew how to handle that, and gradually he had more and more progress into the South. And eventually, in spite of what the Americans threw in there with the modern weapons and all, we were unable to subdue the uprisings over the entire peninsula. So eventually, and this was after I left, gradually and cleverly, Jop and his troops took over the whole country of Vietnam. And there was nothing the United States and our allies could do about it or were willing to do anything about it. So that, in a nutshell, is how the United States got involved in that particular war. So then we became part of that vast array of people that have survived U.S. wars and who are recognized on uh, Veterans Day. So that's why I was asked to, to come here today to say a little bit about Veterans Day. And so that's essentially how I became a part of Veterans Day, because I'm a veteran of the Vietnam War. So what, what happened was it's generated probably a lot more questions than answers as to why we eventually got into Vietnam and how we were unsuccessful. Because we have to say, the United States used to talk about, we have never lost a war. That was you know, the, the cry, we've never lost a war. Well, we did lose a war. We lost Vietnam War because we failed to accomplish what we had set out to do, and that was supposedly to liberate the people of South Vietnam from the communist onslaught. So we, and that's where, that's where we, we sit today, and the Viet, Vietnam has become a fairly uh, successful, livable place, and we pulled all of our forces out, and left what they had to deal with in reassembling their country and solidifying the population. And from all indications, they were, they were successful. So I just, that's, I just wanted to say a few words about my particular part and what we did and what we couldn't do. So a lot of you may have different ideas about the Vietnam War, why we should have been there, but I, I think we need to take a lesson from this. War is not a, a thing to enter into with any kind of great enthusiasm because it normally doesn't turn out very well. So in the future, and that's primarily one of the reasons I want to talk about, I think we need intelligent leadership that understand the issues that don't get us involved in things that we can't win. So I, I would like to say I, I, I fault the leadership in Vietnam. I fault them, our leadership, because they didn't understand what was impacting Vietnam, what the problems were. The problems were the French were imposing their French laws on a, a population of people that had no say in what they wanted to do. And the thing was, people like Ho Chi Minh, the leaders of the North Vietnamese, they read what Thomas Jefferson had written. When the United States decided to cut ties with England and started the Revolutionary War in the United States, they said, we don't want to be ruled by a king in England directing us 
in all of our activities. We want to be independent. Life, liberty, and the percent of pursuit of happiness. Those are the, the immortal words of Thomas Jefferson. And apparently our leadership at the time hadn't read that. But Ho Chi Minh read it. And he understood that. So that's why he was successful in leading the, his people against an ill-fated war because we were in the wrong. We were opposing the independence of, of a people and their culture that wanted to run their country without the King of England or the French King telling them what to do. So I guess the message I want to get across is our leadership is important and they need to understand the problems and we need to keep you folks from having to fight another war that doesn't make any sense. So having said that, I just wish you all good luck and I hope that none of you have to engage in fighting a war, even though we need to celebrate those who do fight them because the people that fight the war aren't the people that make those decisions. They're the people that get hurt and die. So thank you very much.